um, episode 11, rest to string. Let's recap the problem statement. We are given a string of lengths n consisting of characters v, k, and question marks. For each p from 1 to n, we uh, have to check if it is possible to replace all the question marks by characters v or k, such that the resulting string has period p. And n is up to 500,000. So on the left, you can see some examples. So if we're given the string of lens 4, um, if p equal to 1, then those two characters should be equal, but they are not. Uh, and for three, uh, 2 and 3, uh, we can actually uh, replace question marks by uh, v or k. And for p equal to 4, it's always possible because we do not have any restrictions on the string. Um, and for example like this, uh, it might not be clear, but like for period equal to 1, uh, it's obvious that all the characters should be equal and we cannot do that. But for period equal to 2, it might not be obvious that uh, it is not possible, but actually we can see that first and third characters should be equal, then third and fifth characters should be equal, and fifth and seventh characters should be equal. Therefore, first and seventh characters should be equal, uh, which is impossible. Uh, so similar reasoning for p equal to 3, uh, for 4 and 5 uh, answers exist. For 6, we already have two characters on distance 6 uh, that are not equal, so it's impossible, and for 7, always possible. All right, so for fixed p, uh, it is good if and only if for each remainder modular p, we can put the same character on all the positions with that remainder. Uh, so it would be bad for a given remainder if and only if uh, in the initial string there is already v uh, on position with given remainder and k on position with the same remainder. Uh, but that can happen for any remainder with uh, given modulo p, if and only if uh, there are v and k on two positions with distance that is divisible by p. This might seem like a um, very obvious statement. Of course, if there are v and k on positions uh, on distance that are uh, divisible by p, then it is impossible to make period p. But we need if and only if part. So we need to prove that if there are no such uh, pair of characters, then this p is good. Uh, and uh, this reasoning uh, explains it. So uh, can we just, for all possible distances, check if there are a pair of v and k that are already in the string and on this given distance d? Distances are up to n by model, right? So there is a reasonable number of them. Uh, yes, we can. And it is actually one of the classical applications of uh, fast Fourier transform. Um, let's say that A is the set of positions of characters V and B is the set of positions of characters K. Uh, then we want to find the set of such characters uh, such numbers d, so that uh, we can choose some v, so choose its position a, and choose some k, so its position b, uh, such that a minus b is the distance. So we want to find all d that can be represented as a uh, difference between a and b. Uh, let's first practice on a similar problem where uh, instead of difference we have sum. So uh, for given sets A and B we want to find a set S which consists uh, of numbers that are representable as a sum where one number is from set A and the other number is from set B. Let's define polynomials. So polynomial f of x is 
sum of monomials x to the power of a for all a from the set a and the same for polynomial g and set b. Um, let's look at the product of these polynomials. Then if we look at uh, coefficient uh, before uh, x to the s power uh, of product of f and g, uh, it will be equal to the sum over a from 0 to s uh, coefficient before x to the power of i in f multiplied with coefficient before s minus a in g. Uh, so since coefficients of f and g are uh, zero if we don't have uh, that power in our set and one if we do have, uh, this product can be one if and only if uh, we have a in set a and s minus a in set b. So the number we calculate is number of ways to represent S as a sum of A and B. And since uh, our sets were uh, consisting of non-negative integers that are uh, bounded by N, uh, calculating this multiplication with F of T will take us N log N time. So for solving for differences, we probably should do something similar. Let's try to just do exactly the same. Uh, defines uh, polynomial f, polynomial g, but in g we want to subtract b instead of adding, uh, but that's not a polynomial. <laughs> that might be a problem. Uh, but we can actually shift it to the right to make it polynomial. Let's uh, define J prime. It's not a derivative, just another polynomial. Uh, so it's a sum of monomials x to the power of c minus b for every b uh, from set c, uh, from set b, where c is uh, some bound on, like upper bound on all the numbers in b. For example, we can take maximum element from b. Uh, but we can take something bigger if we want. Uh, so it's easy to see that actually we defined uh, this function uh, uh, g prime as x to the power of c multiplied by function g, which wasn't a polynomial, uh, but it it's a function. Uh, and now look at the product of f and g prime. G prime is a polynomial now because all these numbers are integers and non-negative. Um, and the product of f and g prime uh, is uh, the product of f and g and x to the power of c. Uh, so if we just looked at the product of f and g, it, uh, it would represent what we wanted, right? But it is not a polynomial, so um, it's harder to think about. Uh, and by shifting it, uh, we make it polynomial. So h is a polynomial now. But if we divide it by x to the power of c, just by saying for each polynomial we should decrease its power by c, we would get like exactly what we wanted. But uh, we don't have to uh, actually do it. That's just uh, how we are thinking and why we did that. Uh, it's okay to just look at uh, this h is a, pro a product of f and g prime and uh, if we want to get the number of representations of d as a minus b uh, we will actually kind of look at representations of number d plus c as a sum uh, of two numbers where one is uh, from set a and the other one is c minus b where b was from set b and uh, yeah, we can see that d equals uh, a minus b is the same as d plus c equals to a plus c minus b. Uh, and this thing we already understand how to do. That's basically the problem for some, and that's exactly what we did here. And so that number of representations uh, is a coefficient um, before x to the power of d plus c 
in polynomial h. So that's what we want to calculate. Uh, now we know for which numbers d uh, we can find a pair of v and k there that are on that exact distance. Uh, all that remains uh, is for each p to check uh, if there is some difference d that will make this p bad. Uh, and that would happen if uh, d is an achievable difference and d is divisible by p. For each p uh, there is only uh, all of and divide by p options to check and uh, as always uh, when we want to do something for divisors or uh, vice versa like here for each p we want to look at all the uh, numbers that are divisible by it up to n um, it works in n log n time because of harmonic series uh, so in this problem, we constructed two polynomials in linear time, then multiplied them in n log n time because uh, the degrees of those polynomials were at, uh, at most n. Uh, and after that, uh, did this uh, check also in n log n time, so we have a solution in all of n log n. That's it for episode 11. Thanks for watching.